At what point did you realize that you had to make a change, that you had to leave and come to another NBA team other than the Lakers? The middle of last year when they stopped Phil's negotiations and they stopped my negotiations. I knew it was going to be a change because I've been around long enough to know how stuff's going to go. I wasn't born yesterday. I wasn't born yesterday, so I know how stuff's going to go. You know, they say they're going to do something, and then when they don't do it, then they start back talking. Somebody's going to make a change. So after we lose in the finals, I take a couple days off. My kids come wake me up. Daddy, can you take me to the zoo? So I go downstairs. I'm feeding them cereal. I'm about to get a bowl of cereal. I turn on NBA.com, Phil Spire. And usually when a change is made like that, the guy whose team it is supposed to know about that. I knew nothing about that. When do you expect this soap opera to end that is going on between you and Kobe and Phil writing a book and all of this stuff? It's not a soap opera to me because I don't pay no attention to it. I don't pay no attention to it. Mm -hmm. It's just that I've always spoken the truth. And it's just funny to me now that Phil's coming out with a book, now everybody's starting to believe it. But when I said it, oh, it's just, you know, I always speak the truth. But, you know, I was just trying to, you know, get people to be on the same page. But, you know, certain people got their own agendas and certain people do certain things. However, though, when the tough gets going, the true colors come out. Plain and simple. Do you feel that you and Kobe will ever be able to mend your relationship? I'm a married man. I don't want to have a relationship with another man. I, I don't want to do it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't care. I got a wife and five kids I got to worry about first. And then I got to worry about my mother and father and then my friends and my family. I got to worry about my education. I don't care about another man if you don't like me. I really don't. Who cares if you don't like me? I'm sure he don't care if, if I don't like him. I don't care. I'm down here in Miami with Dwayne Wade now. I'm, I'm just telling you that the stuff that went on before in Orlando and LA, it won't go on. I called him after he came from the Olympics. I met him at a club. We, we sat at a table and you know, we drank water. And I told him everything that happened. I told him everything I tried to do when I was at the other place. And then I ended my statement with, with what went on between me and the other guys could never ever go on between me and you. And I don't think it will because he's a different person than those other guys. He's humble. Can you share with us your conversation with Stan Van Gundy in terms of what your role, how many shots, a defense, you what know, I've role? Been, I've been playing 13 years. And I never, never ever told a coach, hey, I need 15 or 20 shots again. I don't, I don't, I don't tell him that. I didn't say anything. Stan wants us to be a great defensive team. I believe in that. And he wants us to, you know, share the ball and, you know, have fun and play hard. And I believe in that. I never go in the coach's office and say, hey, man, I'm Shaq, man. I need 15 to 15 shots. No, it ain't even about that. However, though, if I got somebody on my back, I need the ball. If you going through the lane and five guys is on you, give me a drop ball pass. That's all I want. I never say, you know, I'm not a ball hawk. You give me the ball and I got somebody on my back, I'm going to take the high percentage shot that I always take. If the double come, I'm getting it out to my shooter. Talk to me a little bit about what you did this summer. I look at you now and you've lost weight. You, you know, a lot of people, great. you know, a lot of people try to try to make an issue of my weight. But I'm going to give the people a little lesson. Muscle weighs more than fat. And all I did was lift. Because what you got to understand is I'm the only NBA player that's a professional wrestler. I'm playing football out there. So I had to lift and get real big and get real strong. And even at 345, 355, 365, I still was averaging 2710. Look it up. That's what I averaged, 2710. So weight never had nothing. It's just, it's just you know, those guys and their, and their you know, tricky tactics on try to, you know, downsize me or whatever. The most talented, most dominant player in the world. And I want to welcome Shaquille O'Neal. That didn't know me. He said, Shaq, I want you to be the young Shaq. Remember that young Shaq? At 315, 320, that's what I want you to be. I said, yes, sir. And I was 350 when I met Pat. He said, yes, sir. And I worked my ass off every day. And it's showing. And it will show this year. What is your biggest challenge here in Miami? My biggest challenge is, is to get it done. I want four or five or maybe even six championships. So y'all can say Shaq was the baddest millennium big man ever. I start to get selfish as a big man because when you talk about the greatest big man, right now, Bill Russell's the man. He got 11 championships. Ain't, ain't nobody beating that. So he's the man I can accept that. And then they talk about Will, then they talk about Kareem, then they talk about the King. So that leaves me at number five. I have a problem with that being at number five. 
So I'm here to win a couple more, and then hopefully when I'm done playing, they say, hey, Bill was the man. But Shaq, wow, a lot. And that's it, Bill, Shaq, and then that's it. I don't want to be Bill, Will, Korean, Shaq. So that's why I'm still playing. That's why I try to dominate and do what I do. And then hopefully when it's all said and done, the people, the consensus will say Shaq, second best big man.